The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Filer Rural Fire Department, Idaho, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 35878. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting at the front bumper, you'll find a cutout on each side. You'll locate two tow hooks on the passenger and driver side. Located in the center, you'll find your emergency warning speaker and also PA speaker. On the outer edges, you'll find the headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. And on the outer edge, you'll find a forward facing emergency warning light. As we move to the grill area, you'll find two forward facing emergency lights. Moving up just above the Freightliner logo is where you'll find the grab handle for tilting the hood. Moving out to the outer edges, you'll find your mirror housing a flat mirror and also a convex mirror. Moving up to the brow, you'll find five clearance lights and then up onto the roof area, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Let's go ahead and take a look at some close-ups of the items that we just talked about. First, let's start with the front bumper in the cutout area where you'll find in the very center your emergency warning speaker and also PA speaker. On the outer edges, you'll find the two tow hooks open-ended. Let's go ahead and move up to the grill area where you'll find two forward-facing emergency warning lights. Moving up above that, you'll find the Freightliner logo, and then directly above that is where you'll find the grab handle for tilting the hood. As we move around to the headlight structure, housing low and high beam headlights and a turn indicator emergency warning light. Also at the very top section of the hood is where you'll find your air intake. As we move down to the fender, passenger and driver's side, this is your turn indicator. Let's move down to the wheel assembly where you'll find Alcoa wheels and Michelin tires. And then just a general view here of the cab section at the very bottom section of each of those steps is where you'll find perimeter lighting and also step lighting. As we move up to the very front section, you'll find the fill location for your diesel. It is the silver cap. Moving just to the right of that location, you'll find the fill location for your DEF. It's the blue cap. Moving up, you'll find a keyed grab handle. As we move just to the right, you'll find long grab handles just to the rear of the door section. These are for gaining entry and exit out of the cab. Let's go ahead and take a look at some close-ups. First, we'll start with the perimeter lighting just underneath the step area. We'll move now to the fill location for your diesel tank. And then just to the right, the fill location for your DEF tank. Let's go ahead and move inside the driver's door, where you'll find affixed to the driver door panel all of our safety and warning placards. As we move up onto the top of the window seal area, you'll find two items. First, let's start with the placard, indicating the height, length, and gross vehicle weight rating, and then also window controls for your mirrors. Moving now to the dash area, you'll find at the very top, you'll find your speed control, set excel, and coast for your cruise control. As you move further down, you'll find your headlights on and off switch, and then moving down, you'll find the increase or decrease for your speed control. As we move down to the very bottom section, your ignition is a keyed ignition. The key is located about the left knee of the operator. Let's go ahead and move into the dash area. We'll identify a few items within the dash. We'll start first with the gauges located on the left-hand side of the operator. At the very top, you'll find oil pressure. As we move downward, you'll find water temperature. And then at the very bottom section, you'll find your transmission temperature. Moving across uh, just to the right, you're going to find your tachometer. Located further to the right, you'll find your speedometer. And then as we move all the way back up to the very top section, we have a combination gauge. This is going to be your ultra low sulfur diesel fuel at the very top right corner. And within that same gauge area, you'll find your DEF level indicator. And it is a digital readout at the very bottom section with LED lights. As we move further down, you'll find the front air and rear air. Located in the very center, you're going to find all of your diagnostic information will display on the digital screen 
or tally lights located on each side of that digital screen. Let's move just to the right. I've got an additional image, a little out of focus on this image, but we'll still be able to get the point across. This is your filter miner for your air filter. Just beneath that, you'll find a digital readout for your Allison transmission pad. Let's move further to the right to the center dash area, where you'll find tally lights for pump engaged and OK to pump. Moving just to the right, you'll find the yellow diamond, which is your pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. Moving to, uh, just to the right, you'll find a protected switch. This is your PTO pump engage switch. We also have some additional switches next to that for high idle, for example. Moving further to the right, you'll find a digital readout. Moving further down, you'll find mirror heat, differential lock, and also your regen. All the way to the right, some additional tally lights. One, do not move your truck, and then also battery and OK to engage high idle. As we move further down, you'll find your seat belt information. Red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted. Green, they're in the seat and belted. We also have HVAC at the very top section, power outlets on the right side, door locks, and window control, electric windows. Let's move overhead of the operator. This is going to be directly over the head where we'll find emergency warning lights. This is your master switch to engage. Also engages your lower zone and rear zone. Also a Sorn, uh, siren horn selector switch, and then also your PA system and electronic siren. You'll find at the base of the seat pedal this placard indicating the gross vehicle weight rating of the vehicle, cold tire inflation, VIN number. You'll also find the date to manufacture and the five-digit job number. All of the fluid components and fluid capacities are located on this placard also. At the floor level is where you'll find your master battery switch. This is to turn on or off your batteries. And then as we move to the seat itself, it is an air ride. We do have comfort controls. Seat forward and backwards is the orange. And then up and down for the air ride is going to be the air switch just located on the right side of the image. Let's move to the next set of doors back where you'll find your crew cab. You'll also find a fix to the door panel, safety and warning placard information. As we move underneath the area, you'll find your perimeter lighting or step lighting. And as we move to the very rear section, you'll find you have three seats located across the rear wall of the apparatus. These seats do have SCBA capability stored in the very backrest of those seats. As we move overhead, you'll find push on and off white lens dome lights. And then let's go ahead and move now to the pump section or midsection of your apparatus. Just a general view, let's start at the very bottom section with perimeter lighting and additional step lighting. For gaining access or going aloft into the pump panel walkthrough area, we have an additional step located per NFPA. In the very top section, you'll find a latch will release, gain access to additional storage. This is on the passenger and driver side. We have two cross lays located here, an upper section and also lower. The speed lays do remove and you also have netting on the outer edge. Some additional close-ups here of that. We'll go ahead and move now up to the pump panel area. These are the grab handles for gaining access to that area. Let's go ahead and take a general view of the pump panel top mount. And we'll start first on the right side. And we'll start with your driver's side auxiliary inlet. This is a two and a half inch female. Moving just to the left side, you'll find the two two and a half inch discharges. Moving further to the left, you'll find your tank to pump, tank fill recirculating line. At the very top section, you'll also find an engine cooler. This is a twist, not a pull. As we move to your fire pump primer, this is a push to prime air, and also for best practices, at least 1,000 RPMs when engaging the fire pump primer. The very upper section, you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule. We also have some warning placards here, never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. As we move further to the right, once again, fire pump primer at the very top section. Additional discharges here for your speed lays and also a two and a half inch passenger side discharge. Water level gauge indicator. And as we move to the very center, you'll find in the gray area, this is your two large gauges here for your master intake and master discharge. In between the two of those, you'll find your test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They're currently plugged and these are for testing purposes. Let's move to the very top section just next to that uh, two larger gauges where you'll find a speaker at the very top section. It's an audible alarm and then also an indicator OK to pump. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the pump boss. First, you'll find if illuminating, a check engine light would be yellow in color. We do have a digital readout for the RPM located in the very center section. As we move just to the right of that, you'll find a stop engine. If that was illuminating, it would indicate red in color. As we move down the blue button, it spells menu. This is to scroll through the various menu functions of your pump boss. We also have tally information regarding your engine diagnostics. And then also to the right, you'll find a red silence button. This allows you to silence any audible alarms that may be sounding from your pump boss. As we move down, you have two options, either pressure mode or RPM mode. Those are the two yellow buttons on the left. A digital readout for that pressure and also additional information will display in this screen. We do have a throttle reading indicating that it's okay to engage the throttle when this light is illuminating. And then also a preset button, which is green. If you choose to preset a certain specific pressure or RPM, it can be done through this green button. At the very bottom, right to increase, left to decrease throttle. In the very center, you have a push for idle. As we move to the right, we've got some future switches and also a panel light. Let's go ahead and take a look up into the dunnage area. We're looking now to the right side or driver's side. As we look to the very center, you'll find your master stream discharge location. And then just to the left, we'll look to the dunnage area also. And as we move to the very top section, there is also a rear facing LED light for your hose bed area. Let's move back down onto the driver's side where you'll find your air inlet and then also a 20 amp shoreline auto eject plug. We'll identify some areas within the pump panel area. Once again, this is on the driver's side. First, we have the two two and a half inch discharges color coded and labeled. As we move to the right, we do have a warning placard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. As we move downward from this location and slightly to the right, you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule. Large diameter pump intake is the Pierce American Flag Eagle logo. And then just to the lower section is where you find your two and a half inch auxiliary inlet. Once again, control located at the pump panel. As we move to the right, we have a warning placard. Only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and that's only after proper training. To the right, we have your pump drain. And at the very bottom, all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. And then further to the right, you'll find your placard that says Watrous. That's to tell you the type of pump that you have and also its rated capacity. Let's go ahead and take a look at that placard. You have a 1,250 GPM pump. Moving now to the close-ups for all of our discharge drains. Warning placard, only trained personnel should operate the piece of equipment. As we move up from that location, driver's side auxiliary inlet drain. Moving just to the left is where you're gonna find your two and a half inch auxiliary inlet. We have the two two and a half inch discharges located here, driver's side number one and driver's side number three. Large diameter inlet, and pump drain. As we move up to the very top section, this is that minimum operation maintenance schedule. And then also our warning placard that remember that caps may be under pressure. Let's go ahead and look onto the next section of the pump panel. General view here, you can see we have a large pan door, lift and turn latch gains us access behind the polished stainless steel for accessing into the pump area. We do have a dome light in the very top section, push on. As we move to the body section, you'll find two side facing emergency warning lights in upper and lower. We also have SCBA bottle storage location in front of and rear of the rear axle. Let's take a look with compartments in the open position. As we move to the very left upper corner, you'll find when plugged into shore power, your charging system will activate. Two SCBA bottle storage locations, As we move to the very top section, you'll find your battery maintenance system. When once again, when plugged into shore power, this will become active. As we move to the right and left side, you'll find LED strip lights located on each side of the roll-up doors. Access is a push, which will allow you to open the lever and gain access into the SCBA bottle storage location. Moving to the rear axle, you'll find two wheels, tandem, located at the very bottom, Michelin and Alcoa wheels. General view here of the rear section of the apparatus. Let's move just to the rear tailboard 
where you'll find on the outer edges perimeter lighting, passenger and driver side, and then you'll also find directly in the center your tow hook. If we're used for towing purposes, please use the axle area, not this tow hook. As we move to the left side of the body, you'll find an emergency warning light. We also have additional step lights and also a ladder on the left side for getting access to go aloft on the top of the truck. Stop, turn, and reverse lights on passenger and driver side. And as we move up, you'll find an emergency warning light. We do have a hose bed light. This is the cupped switch located here. This will activate that light at the forward section of the bulkhead. Some additional warning placards. First, entanglement hazard. Because of those lines coming from aloft, there is the possibility of entanglement. Also, always face the vehicle while climbing on it, and also never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. At the very top section, you'll find some rear-facing scene lights. And as we move to the hose bed area, Center section catching the clearance lights at the very top section. Let's go ahead and move down where you'll find the Pandora located on the right side, which is going to be the passenger side rear. This is where you'll gain access for your ladder storage. At the very bottom section, you'll find your license plate holder, emergency warning lights, and also step lights. In the very center section, you'll find your roll-up door. As we move once again to the upper right-hand corner, this is going to be the storage location for your extension ladder, and then also roof ladder, pike pole storage, and then at the very bottom section, you'll find a 10-foot folding attic ladder. Let's go ahead and take a look in the rear compartment now, roll-up compartment door gaining access. This is a through compartment, meaning that it transfers from the passenger to the driver side for access. Let's move around now to the passenger side of the vehicle on the body area where you'll find once again side facing emergency warning lights, two SCBA bottle storage locations front and rear of the axle and also a mid marker light. What I would like to point out is just in front of the rear axle you'll find a warning placard indicating extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures do exhaust do exist. Please be cautious where you park your vehicle. We have compartment doors in the open position, SCBA bottle storage location, front and rear. There are also retaining straps inside. Let's move down to the passenger side pump panel area. We do have an additional Pandor located at the upper section. This is for gaining access behind the pump panel for inspection and maintenance. As we move down, you'll find the two and a half inch passenger side discharge large diameter inlet, it's the American flag Eagle. We also have an additional access door, also a warning placard regarding pressure hazard, and across the very bottom, all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's move just underneath the passenger side running board where you'll find perimeter lighting, and then also on the very left side, you'll find a cap. Remember not to cap that, that is your pressure relief. As we move forward in the top section here, we'll find American flag Eagle, large diameter discharge, or I'm sorry, intake, and then all of our discharge drains color coded and labeled across the very bottom section. Let's go ahead and look to the top section of the cross lay area. You'll find grab handles for gaining access to go aloft. Also, the same speed lays are accessible from the passenger side as they are from the driver's side. As we move just underneath the running board, you'll find a step and also LED lights for illuminating those steps, and then at the very bottom section, additional LED lighting. As we move up to that step area, you'll find additional storage with inside that area. Butterfly latch gains us access into the top section here. 
Let's go ahead and move around now to the passenger side crew cab area. We'll start at the very back section. Perimeter lighting or step lighting to gain access into the cab area. Let's move around to the rear cab door where you'll find safety placards affixed to the door panel. As we look inside, you'll find three seats capable of SCBAs across the very rear wall. As we move to the forward section of the cab for the officer seat affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placards. Also, you'll find a pedestal seat located here, grab handle. As we move inside, this seat does also have SCBA storage in the backrest. Foot pedal for your electronic siren. As we move to the dash area, and then we'll move now back to the exterior where you'll find your mirror housing a flat and convex mirror. As we move forward to that location to the hood area, you'll find the two release mechanisms located one on the passenger and one on the driver's side. Once these are released, you can go ahead and gain access to tilt your cab hood. As we move to the side, you'll find a marker turn indicator and then also a side facing emergency warning light, Michelin tires, Alcoa wheels, headlight structure housing low and high beam and turn indicator. General view here from the passenger side. Congratulations, Filer Rule Fire Department, Idaho, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 35878. If you have any questions about your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.